In this video, we're going to talk through the course syllabus. You can find that course syllabus on the course website. It's linked to from Husky CT, and you'll also be able to find it directly linked to from the math department's website. So as we scroll through this website here, we'll see that we've got a course description and prerequisites. Those are just from the course catalog. We've got information about the textbook. That's the first thing that's really important for this course. Uh, so the textbook is the multivariable portion of Stuart. It's the same textbook that you've used for Calc 1 and Calc 2 if you took those here at UConn, taking either 1131 or 1132. Um, you'll need the thicker version of the bat book to have chapters 12 through 16, which we cover in this course. Even if you do happen to have the thinner copy, if you did take it at UConn and did got the WebAssign code, that WebAssign code will continue to work and you can get the ebook online. So if you have taken those courses at UConn, you might not need to buy that textbook. So maybe just wait the first couple weeks to kind of see if you need it. Um, if you will be taking both 2110 and 2410, which is differential equations, even if you're taking differential equations in a different semester, it makes more sense to get SunGage Unlimited for this semester because that will give you access to 2410 later on. So definitely look into those options, read through that, ask us if you have any questions about which, which textbook you should get. We wanted to do the best we can to save you as much money as possible. For our lecture, we will be meeting in person for my sections as well as Professor Doss's sections. It's every week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Professor Rizzi will be having synchronous online lectures. So if you prefer online lectures or in-person lectures, you can always switch sections to make sure you have one that works best for you. Additionally, um, Professor Rizzi has developed a full set of course videos through eCampus, and those will be available to all students who need that additional resource. For the graded components of this course, the newest thing, the thing that's probably most different, are these practice problem points, these PPP. So in a lot of classes, you'll have things like web assigned homework that you have to complete, or maybe worksheets you have to complete, um, those sorts of things. In this class, you get an option of which works best for you. So every type of activity you complete, be it the web assign assignments, uh, weekly worksheets, extra practice worksheets, those will earn you certain numbers of points. You can also get points for participating in discussion sections. And you just need to earn 100 points by the end of the semester. Um, we're capping you at 40 points up to exam two, one and 80 points up to exam two, just to make sure people continue to earn those points. They don't earn everything during the first few weeks and then stop doing work. So for the web assign assignments, those will have due dates each week corresponding to the work that was finish the week before. Um, you have unlimited tries because we want you to just sort of try the question until you sort of can figure it out. If you get stuck, you can go ask at the Q Center, you can come to office hours, you can ask in your discussion section. Um, there are set due dates. After that due date passed, you can request an extension. That's all automatically done in WebAssign. So make sure you read through these policies to kind of get a feel for it. Um, and each WebAssign assignment you complete earns you two of those PPP. So each week, there's usually two or three assignments, so you can earn up to six points a week by doing WebAssign. Additionally, there's going to be weekly worksheets available through Husky CT. Um, those will have several different types of problems on there. There'll always be three practice problems, and those practice problems are the problems that you can submit through Gradescope available through Husky CT um, each week. So each problem earns you a point, so you can get up to three points of PPP, by doing those weekly worksheet standard problems. There's also some extra practice problems on there. Those are just for practice. You will automatically have the solution to those from the beginning. So those are not turned in for credit. Um, there's also challenge problems. There's different numbers of challenge problems on the different worksheets and you can pick up to two to earn two additional points per week. So you can get up to five PPP if you do both the weekly worksheets and, sorry, the weekly worksheet three questions plus the two challenge problems each week. Uh, those are going to be due Wednesday nights on Gradescope. You can submit them late up until the exam that covers that material um, and everything you'll see online. So you can see those specific due dates for each worksheet on Husky CT. Additionally, there's additional practice worksheets. You can find those on the course website in the outline tab, but we'll also put them on Husky CT. Hopefully there's a pattern here you're noticing. Um, you can complete those and earn two points of PPP, and those are going to be due just at each exam, just so you can use those as you're studying for the exam. 
Additionally, each TA is allowed to give each student in section up to one point of PPP a week for actively participating. So maybe you'll go up and do a question on the board, or you'll explain a concept to the class, or go around and help other students in the class understand a problem. By doing those active participations, your TA will record your PPP for the week. So altogether, there's lots of different opportunities to gain these points. You can decide what's going to work best for you and do that. Um, and that's how you can earn these points. Now, in addition to that sort of more standard things we have, you'll be have weekly discussion quizzes each Thursday, starting week one. Week one will just be on the syllabus. Um, they'll be returned the following Tuesday in discussion. And if you'd like to get corrections, do corrections on those quizzes to get half your points back, those corrections will be due the following Thursday. So we'll give you specific instructions in discussion section on how you need to go about doing those corrections for the quizzes. There are three midterm exams. Each midterm is going to have some true-false, some multiple choice questions, some matching, but also some free response. So there'll be opportunities to get partial credit on most of the questions. There'll be 50 minutes in those discussion sections. You have to take it during your assigned discussion section time. Additionally, instead of having a final exam, we'll have a final portfolio of this class. So there'll be some written questions where you have to explain reasoning, give examples of problems, do out some, some mathematical work algebraic work. Um, we'll give you more information on that as the semester progresses. If for any reason you need to submit work late, please go ahead and read the different uh, categories of late work for the web assign and the worksheets. Those are all outlined here. Um, but just, you know, if something pops up out of your control, let us know and we will find a way to work with you, which is, you know, fair and consistent with what we're doing with everyone else in the class. Uh, we're here to help, so definitely let us know early how we can help you, what assistance you need, and we'll work with you to make sure that you can do the best you can in this class. Um, just kind of a breakdown, those PPP, you want to get up to that 100 points by the end of the semester, that's worth 20% of your grade. The discussion quizzes with those corrections are another 20%. Uh, there's three exams. Whatever exam you get the lowest score on, that'll count 10% of your grade, and the other two will be 20%. And then the final portfolio is worth 10% of your final grade. If you're in the honor section, the grading will be a little bit different. So definitely reach out to your TA for your honor section to figure out exactly how they're going to run that honors work. We've got the grade breakdowns, different letter grades here in the syllabus, um, some tips on how to study for the course. Really the best way to study is by doing problems, trying them on your own with notes, without notes, and sort of building yourself up to you're ready to do those in an exam setting. And that's what all of the PPP assignments are meant to do, is to give you an opportunity to just continuously practice the problems in this class. Um, so if you, if you get stuck, if you don't know how to do things, you can use lots of resources to get answers, but make sure at the end of the day, you do actually know how to do those problems so that you can do them later in a, in a proctored setting, or if, you know, if this material comes up in a later course, maybe in your job, that you actually have those skills so you can apply them later. No calculators on exams or quizzes. You can do calculators at home if you want. If you want to use them on your WebAssign homework, on your worksheets, that's fine. But you need to make sure you know how to do all the work without a calculator on exams. We've outlined our academic integrity policy here. Um, in general, any work you submit should reflect your own individual understanding of problems, so you shouldn't be copying other people's solutions either from classmates or from online resources. Make sure each thing you submit reflects your own individual understanding. If you have any questions about resources that are allowed or not allowed, just reach out to us and we'll be happy to discuss that. And if you ever get stuck, instead of looking online or copying something, just come to office hours, go to the Q Center, go to the discussion section, go to your TA's office hours. We will help you. We want you to understand. You don't need to just copy things down and give them to us. We've got a list of uh, support services here. So if you are struggling, you know, definitely make sure you take advantage of all the resources that UConn has made available to you. Reach out to the Dean of Students Office, the Center for Students with Disabilities, the Counseling and Mental Health Services Offices, the Alcohol and Other Drug Services Offices, the Career Services Offices, or the Q Center. All of these are gonna be able to help give you great support throughout the semester. If you're not sure who to talk to, if you want to be pointed in the right direction, you're welcome to come talk to us as a starting point, and we can help connect you with those resources. You'll be able to see your grades, including how many PPP you've earned throughout the semester on Husky CT, so just make sure you're always keeping an eye on that My Grade section. If you notice any errors, let us know so we can get those fixed as quickly as possible. 
Uh, you should expect to spend about 12 to 14 hours a week on this course, so make sure that you're finding that time in your schedule so that you can do, do your work. Don't, don't fall behind on your PVP. Make sure you're studying for exams. Make sure you're keeping up with those quizzes just so you can do as well as possible. There's additional information provided here. You'll probably see very similar information in each of your other courses, so I'll give you an opportunity to read through that. If you have any questions, though, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to help you, and we're really excited to work with you this semester. See you all in class.